Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Father, I will come to you today, Lord, asking that you will help strengthen our families, help us to grow spiritually, help us to grow emotionally, and help us to grow family strong so that we can learn what it is we need to know and be the people we need to be so that we can partake in the promises of the Bible and live on to inherit the earth. In your son's name we pray. Amen. And so be it. That's right, y'all. In this class, we're going to be talking about families. In particular, we're going to be talking about families with issues. A lot of what this class will be about today is how Hermes is instructed to deal with his talkative wife and his bad behaving children. So, if your house is in turmoil, with many arguments and such going on, you'll want to pay particular close attention to the instructions that are given to Hermes on how to deal with such things. Hermes is also going to get an introduction to the book from the church. This book will contain a message for the elect of God. And that's what this entire class is geared toward is the elect of God. And so we're going to hear about this book in this class. So if you would, go ahead and push that like button, hit that subscribe button and or that bell notification button so you can see the rest of this series out of the Shepherd of Hermes. We still have Vision 3 coming up. And after you watch this video, you can go in and you can check out the other classes we've already done. We've already completed the entire book of similitudes as well as commands. And so you can check out playlists for those videos. And I'll give you a link to those at the end of this video. Be prepared to leave a comment as we go and enjoy. Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Got Stacey and Journey with me. Shalom. Hello. In this class, we're going to look at the first book called The Shepherd of Hermes, which is his visions. And we're going to be looking in chapter 2. If you haven't checked out the vision 1, you can check that out after you watch this video. Alright, Journey, you going to read for us? Yes. All right, we can start at um, Vision 2. Uh, I guess that first part is not really a part of the verse. Stacey, you want to read that part? Vision 2, again, of his neglect of correcting his talkative wife and of his lewd sons. So we talked about this a little bit in the last part of the um, series on how Hermes wasn't chastising his children. Mm-hmm. Or, and, and, or his wife is, is the members of his household, and that is actually what's gotten Hermes in trouble now. Yeah. All right. Uh, so let's go ahead and start with verse 1. As I was on the way to Kuma, about the same time that I went the year before, I began to call to mind the vision I formerly had. And again the Spirit carried me to, away and brought me into the same place in which I had been the year before. So this is Hermes continuing the vision that he saw in chapter 1. Yeah, this is just at another time. I think he, um, I can imagine that he was probably going somewhere and that he was exactly at the same place, the same time that he was uh, the previous year. And once again, he was taken into his vision. Yeah, I think it would be interesting to actually look up and see where this Kuma place is. But we see that it says um, that it was the same time as the year before. That makes me think that it was some type of feast day. It possibly could have been a feast day or some appointment that he had um, that would have been... You know, a yearly thing, yeah. something he did every year. And... Um, Going to the feast days would have been something he would have been traveling for every year. But other than that, I mean, we don't really have anything to go by why it was a year-to-year -year thing. Then it says, I began to call to mind the vision I formerly had. So he's once again in a dream state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, in the vision in chapter 1, he he fell into a dream state and saw... Um, this uh, rocky path that he was supposed to take uh, through this treacherous land and then on the other side of that land he met with this woman that has been talking to him yes it says and the spirit again carried me away and brought me into the same place in which he had been the previous year before yes all right verse two two 
And when I was come into the place, I fell down upon my knees and began to pray unto the Lord and to glorify his name that he had esteemed me worthy and had manifested unto me my former sins. Okay, so now Hermas is once again in the habit of confessing his sins and worried about, you know, his sins. Mm -hmm. One of the things that come to mind for me is that, um, you know, I know we're, we're supposed to confess our sins, but uh, a funny thing that happens with Hermas is that, and I can't remember exactly what book it was, where he was once again confessing his sins and the um, angel, I believe, told him to hold off confessing his sins. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be in this chapter it. or the next one. Yeah, because as if he was just doing it so much, um, you know, he said, or she, it was he or she that said, you know, hold off unto confessing your sins and ask for righteousness. Yeah, ask for righteousness, yeah. Yeah, so don't keep talking about the bad stuff you do and actually try to do something good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Alright, let's go on to verse 3. 3. And when I arose from prayer, behold, I saw over against me the old woman whom I had seen the last year, walking and reading a certain book. Okay, so now, spoiler alert, I mean, this is a book um shepherd of hermas has three parts to a commands and similitudes but we're going to assume that you've already gone through all of the book now so we can tell you who this lady is all right this old lady yeah she's the church right she is the church figure she's the same as the young lady that we saw we're going to see her um in this chapter we're going to see her again in the next chapter where she's going to uh give uh, Hermas a very sophisticated vision about how the whole entire church works, how it was created, how what's going, where it's going to end up, and a lot of details in between. Mm -hmm. And now we're seeing again this book um, that we briefly mentioned in the last... Yeah, because this, this book is important. So she didn't read the book in the last uh, section, and I don't think she's going to read it in this section. I think it's in Vision 3 that she actually gets around to reading the book. But we have covered that message uh, before if somebody wanted to look that up, um, look up that video we did on the book. They could jump ahead if they want to. But it's in verse 92 or 94 of chapter 3 where we're going to hear about the book. 4. And she said unto me, Can thou tell these things to the elect of God? I answered and said unto her, Lady, I cannot retain many things in my memory, but give me the book, and I will write them down. I wonder if just when I was listening to the audio version of this, I can imagine this book being very big, and he um, immediately looked at it and said, um, there's no way I'm going to be able to remember all of that, but you give me the book and I'll read it myself. Well, she first talked the book to him. She read it to him. She was reading to him the information right. from the book, right? right? And you remember in chapter one that the first part of the book was hard yeah. and, you know, he couldn't remember anything out of that. And then he did remember the parts of the second part of the book. Right. Five. Take it, says she, and see that thou restore it again to me. Okay. So, and this book is important. She ain't going to play around with this book. She's giving him the book for him to go and to write down what it says. Mm -hmm. And this book, this message in this book is, notice it says that it's for the elect of God. It's not really intended for everybody. And it's talking about the elect. And then we could get into who actually the elect are. Yeah. Which are the people who will be elected to survive the tribulation and go on to be the new Noahs here on earth to repopulate the earth. So the elect is the 144,000. Yeah, though they are. The 144,000 are the people who are designated to survive the tribulation. They are the elect. Yeah. Okay. That's what it means to 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 make your calling and election sure is that okay you've you've 
heard the calling, you've answered the call, you've gone on to do everything you needed to do, including what you learned here in the Shepherd of Hermas, and then you, you, you're you using all of this uh, scriptural knowledge to survive the tribulation. That's when you're, you'll be for sure that you are elected, is when you're standing on the other side of the tribu tribulation, still alive in your same body. Six. As soon as I had received it, I went aside into a certain place of the field and transcribed every letter, for I found no syllables. Okay, now here is when we understand that this writing that she has given him is actually in Hebrew. Okay. Now they're in Rome, and they very well could be speaking Greek or mm -hmm. Latin or something like that. Right. But this book, you could tell by it says that it's um, because he found no syllables. Hebrew is the only language that this book could have been written in because of because of that. Mm -hmm. But anyway, let's go on. Okay, number seven. Seven. And as soon as I had finished what was written in the book, the book was suddenly caught out of my hand, but by whom I saw not. So he's done wrote down this book letter for letter. And as soon as he finished it, the book was snatched away. I was just thinking, it could possibly have been the lady who took it away from him. You know, at one time I think we were saying that it might have been uh, something evil or something like that. But just reading how she's saying to remember to restore it back to me, um, I was thinking maybe it was her. It could have been her, it could have been the angels. But the thing about it, he, this book is, is important and not going to leave it in the hands of Hermes. Eight. After fifteen days, when I had fasted and entreated the Lord with all earnestness, the knowledge of the writing was revealed to me. Now the writing was this. Okay, so fifteen days. Now I believe this is fifteen years. After fifteen years of fasting? Yeah. Fifteen then but don't think of the the Contemporary meaning of fasting because you'd have starved to death way before 15 years. Mm -hmm. But this is 15 years of abstaining from evil, doing charitable deeds, doing good, like Isaiah 58 type fast fasting. Yeah, I can see that, but uh, it don't seem to. It could be 15 days. Yeah. It's just when I look over the course of my life, I first read this book way back in about 1996, 1998 time frame. But, and I read it twice, back to back, but it wasn't until uh, about 15 years later, in about 2017 or so, that I actually got the meaning of the book. Well, maybe you're a little slow. <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Uh, I, I probably am a little slow. <laughs> but, yeah, um, I don't know. It just seems like a long time for... Um, and we don't hear anything about it in the meantime, you know, what happened next year, what happened the other 14 years later. Yeah, well, you know, but the same way as throughout the scripture. I mean, you don't, when you hear about um, in Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10, when he said tribulation will last 10 days, he didn't tell him what was going to happen on each day until, of course, you jump over to the pseudopograph and look at the uh, symbols or whatever. But you're not really giving an account of what's going to happen in between. I don't know. It's just that when I look at these time frames that's written in the Shepherd of Hermes, it always seems like years to me. But anyway, it could be days. Let's go on. Nine. Thy seed, O Hermes, hath sinned against the Lord and have betrayed their parents through their great wickedness. And they have been called the betrayers of their parents and have gone on in their treachery. In their treachery. Betrayers of their parents. Talking about the children. Talking about you, Johnny. What do you think about that? He's saying you are a betrayer of your parents and have gone on in your treachery. Yeah, this is, you know... The angel's journey. This is all of children of today. Even when we were kids, we were in the same situation. Betrayers of parents. Uh, caught up in our own wickedness.
Um, it's just it's just the way we we're we're read, raised in Babylonian culture. You know, if our parents ever wanted to try to steer us towards the um, uh, the the commandments or the covenant or whatever, I don't know what our I don't know what my reaction would have been if all of a sudden you know my parents start trying to live the covenant. What do you think would have been your reaction? Well, I I can only go by you know. You know what every other kid in this world would do, and that would that would be to rebel. Mm -hmm. When they find out they can't do the things they like, they can't go to the places they like to go when they want to go. They can't eat the foods that they wanted to eat. You know, different stuff. You know, would actually um, they would fight against the parents as if it was the the parents' idea. You know, to do all of these things, these righteous things, the kids would take it out on them. Yeah, yeah, you would definitely rebel. Uh, you know. To a point of crying, you know, crying, le even leaving home. Yeah, um, tantrums yeah, and all kinds of like stuff. That. So, in this society today, this very well fits um, not only our kids but you know kids all around the world. Yeah. Betrayers, betrayers of parents. And it's simply because we were not um, we were not raised, or you know, all of this. The righteous way of doing things it has been um, pulled out of us has been we've been untrained to do things the righteous way so now we prefer to do things that are um, of this world so that the right the righteous way seems wrong now yeah it was our fathers our forefathers many many years ago that actually turned their back on the covenant mm -hmm. so by the time you know we were born by the time our parents and even our grandparents were born the covenant didn't really exist in our culture. And so if a parent, and when a parent, I'm going to say if, when a parent ever decides that they're going to try to embrace the covenant, the kids are going to be one of the first ones to start acting up and rebelling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the wife. <laughs> yeah, yeah, then the wife. Yep, and then, and then the husband. And then they end up going backwards, back to Babylon. And, you know, we have to wait some years before they get to try it all again. Prayfully, they get to try it again. Some people, will, you know, they're, they're going to get stuck like that. 10. And now have they added lewdness to their other sins and the pollutions of their naughtiness. Thus have they filled up the measure of their iniquities. But thou upbraid thy sons with all these words, and thy wife, who shall be as thy sister, and let her learn to reframe her tongue with which she calumniates. See, now this is what this whole book is really about, you know, and, it, it, you know, it, it starts off this way telling us, but it's all about Hermas getting his family right. It ain't just about Hermas, but it, he is charged with making sure his entire family is on the right path. Yeah, in charge with um, not just getting yourself, you know, where you, you know, you hear a lot of people say, well, I'm accountable for myself, but when you have a family, this is telling us that not only are you accountable for yourself, but you're accountable for your children as well as your wife. Yeah, because I believe, and it's a personal belief, that the all of the 144,000 will have family members, and their family members are expected to go across together. I mean, just like Noah, you couldn't have had just Noah floating around out there on some ark by himself. No, he needed his wife, he needed his kids, and he needed his son's wives on that ark with them because they had the mission of repopulating the earth. And I believe 144,000 are the same way. They're going to need their families with them so that they can help repopulate the earth. Otherwise, what good are they? Mm -hmm. They're just going to be some lonely old man that's, you know, dying to himself. Um, what good is that going to do humanity going forward? No, we actually have to have um, uh, children who who are ready to you know start families and raise families in this new environment, and I think that's why it's so important, why it's stressed so much in this book that Hermes has to get his wife and his kids right because all of them has to be prepared to go across. They're not gonna, you know, they're they're not gonna go without him. He's not gonna go without them they're going to go together so it's important over the course of this time that Hermes is learning this to get his family straight 
Yeah, one of the things I think is interesting in here is just talking about, you know, how the children are doing iniquities, but the wife, she's basically just running her mouth and talking about things that she shouldn't be talking about. And, you know, that's a lot of us, you know, women today, how we um, just start talking. You know, our words are few, not well, our words are many, and they're basically... You know, sometimes just about nothing. Just running your mouth. Just running our mouth. Well, that's what it says at the beginning. It says, neglect and correcting his talkative wife. Mm -hmm. So the women are simply described as being talkative. Yeah. Just don't necessarily talk about what they're talking about. However, you do understand from culminating that that means something like gossiping or something Gossip like that. But slander, they're just talking. Yeah. Like you said, they're just talking. Mm -hmm. Too much. Just talking too much about the wrong stuff. Yeah. And, but it ain't her fault. It's Hermes' fault. The same way the kids are doing lewd acts now, it's not their fault. It's Hermes for not chastising him. It's, he is the head of the household. It's his responsibility to get the wife straight and the kids straight. Otherwise, the house ain't going to get straight. If the man ain't going to get straight, the house ain't going to get straight. So do you believe, um, and does scripture support, that the man has to be in order before he can get his house in order? Yeah, the man has to the man has to be in order, or his house is not going to be in order. I mean, his wife can try, and she would do well to try. If, yeah, if, if, that's what I was thinking. But yeah. you know, the one thing she needs to focus her attention on is getting him on the right path. She can't put him on the right right path. She can't make him do right. She can't make his relationship with the father get where it's supposed to be. All she can try to do as the wife is try to encourage him to look in the father's direction at what the path of righteousness looks like and pray that he actually gets on that path and moves forward. She, she, that does work now. Yeah, and scripture tells us that it's not necessarily, you know, the wife uh, talking and it, by, you know, you can encourage him by not just telling him every day, you know, you need to be righteous, you know, you know, honey, you can be righteous or and all that kind of stuff. Telling him that's wrong and doing you know? that. Yeah, the scripture tells us that if we act it out, the way that we move, the way that we walk, the way that we around him, you know, he will start to see us in a different light. And something happens, and I don't, don't want to say something magically happens, you know, it's just, it happens like that, where the way that we act pulls him closer to the father so you know as women we have a big responsibility on us to um to help our husband yeah that help me and helping your husband is actually helping yourself too right you know because like you said you you can, you can work on yourself and get yourself what you think is right but if your husband ain't right if your family ain't right you're still not going to survive the tribulation you're still going to perish in the tribulation you know, you, you just may end up in a better place than he is in the spirit world. But that's not what we're talking about. Right. We're actually talking about surviving and being alive after this tribulation is over. So we can be like the, like Noah repopulating the earth. Mm -hmm. 11. And when she shall hear these things, she will refrain herself and shall obtain mercy. Now, we can speak to this as being true. Stacey, I mean... This is like part of your personal testimony because you was this culminating talkative wife not so many years ago before you heard this message, before you internalized this message. You were this woman that's been described here. But since then, you know, you, you, you see that the scripture is true because you see how it played out in your own personal life. Yeah, a lot of things that um, I can relate so much to Hermas, you know, not only just this chapter, but throughout the book. Um, giving testimony of how I was and how I, you know, not necessarily in my strength and power, but through much prayer for myself, for my husband, how I refrained from speaking a lot of things and just, you know, went to the Father on them, on 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 those things, and just things just started to turn around. But there was a lot of things that um, happened. It just wasn't me making the decision to refrain you know you gotta get you gotta into the law help. you gotta the covenant and all that other stuff so you have to want to do right you gotta want to yeah yeah you gotta well what i think i was telling my mother-in-law i think she had asked me what what was the turning point and i think i said i decided that i love 
my husband more so that I love, you know, having my way. Yeah. So you have to make a decision that I'm going to, I'm going to make this work. Yeah. And deny yourself. It's, you have to deny yourself a lot. Yeah, and that, that kind of, when you said that, it reminded me how the scripture talks about in these post-tribulation era, people are going to forbear their own will and want to take on the will of the Father. And so that's what you did. You put your own will aside and, you know, said my will is not so important that I have my way as much as, you know, you wanted the will of the Father, and which means that you wanted your house to work um according to a godly house right. you know and so that helped to go a long way as far as the changing it but what about that part up there in 10 where it says who shall be as thy sister well i know later on he t uh i think the, sh the shepherd actually calls herman's wife his sister so is that talking about their former relationship where um, I don't know. What, what does that say? Well, I think it's speaking to how in the second era, you know, resulted from what happened in the first era, that the man has the rulership over his wife. Right. So they're not really equal. They're not really sister and brother. Right. Because he has the rule over here. I mean, I, I can't rule over my sister. Right. You know, if I go to my sister now and try to make her do something, you know, it's going to be a bad day for me, you know, because, you know, she, she is my sister. You know, mm -hmm. she has just as much power to tell me what to do as I have to tell her what to do. Well, at least she thinks she does. <laughs> My sister actually does. <laughs> My sister's bigger than me and everything. But so we're, we're leaving this era where the man is expected to have rule over the wife, where, where she is expected to be subordinate to him. Where, you know, and we're making a transition now where she is actually elevating. The man is not changing. He's not going to go down. Right. She's going to come up to where he's at, to where now they're more equal. Yeah, and that just doesn't come with time. That comes with learning and studying and stuff like that, right? Yeah, you can't just make yourself, you can't yeah. just, you know, tie into some <laughs> women's liberation movement and say women power and it's going to work like that. Right. No, you, you actually are maturing to the point where now you are equal to your husband. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a spirit, and it's a spiritual maturity too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you ain't gonna be able to join some sorority, you know, and they gonna turn you into this superwoman that you can now run your household. No, they, they all that's gonna create is a mess, mm -hmm. you know. But embracing what these lessons you hear about in Hermas, um, the Old Testament and New Testament, of course, and even you mentioned the Third Testament, mm -hmm. by by embracing those teachings and learning, she could actually be. On an equal plane with her husband now. She, he, 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 he still will have the rule over. It's still a republic where his, his say so goes. Yeah. But she's elevated enough to where he sees her as an equal. That's kind of the way I see you as an equal. Yeah, you know, a lot of times we get uh, people make comments and they say how, you know, how we work good together uh, with our study. But that comes with um, a lot of studying. Um, a lot, a lot of, of maturity. maturity and things like that. So now we can work together as brothers and sisters instead of um, more so as uh, I know more than you do and things like that. And, and the thing about it, you can see evidence of that by how it says she will learn to refrain her tongue um, with which she calumniates. So once you start, start to see that talkativeness go away, then... You, you can start to realize that she is growing. Mm -hmm. She is taking that rightful position as a sister. But as long as she's still running her mouth, nah, she's still got a ways to go. 12. And they also shall be instructed when thou shalt have re reproached them with these words, which the Lord has commanded to be revealed unto them. Okay, so now here, this is Hermas. These words that he's talking about are not only found in visions, but they're found in the book called Commands, the second part of the book of the Shepherd of Hermas, as well as similitudes. Mm -hmm. It's only after she gets this will you expect to see the results, not only in her, but your kids and yourself. Yeah. That's, what, that's the main thing about this book. This is why I believe this is one of the most important books 
standalone books there is on the planet. Yeah, this definitely is a standalone book, you know. All of the scripture is, is great and, you know, we need it. It's all good for us and, and correction and all of that. But this here definitely is um, one of those standalone books that not very many people take for that is real or even, you know, know about. I don't believe in it because because of, you know, what the Catholic Church did. They, they did a long way to discredit a lot of books that are extremely helpful it appears to me as if they did it on purpose because they didn't want us to reach that level of spiritual maturity to where we didn't need them. You still see that kind of stuff going on today down at the church. The Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Doug, he doesn't really want you to be able to read and decipher the Bible for him, him yourself. He wants you to always, always, always have to come to him. To get, a, to get an interpretation, to get a prayer, to get an understanding. Because if, if his congregation ever gets to the point that they can do it on their own, according to the new covenant, yeah, he's no longer needed to put himself out of a job. You know, and that's a lot of what I believe, you know, was going on back there in the Catholic Church when they was trying to get the Shepherd of Hermas out of our canonized books was, you know, they didn't want us to gain this spiritual maturity because that that that's what this book is that's what this book is about. I, like you say, we didn't read almost all of the scripture that exists on the planet. But very few books are you going to pick up and read and it's actually going to change your life. Yeah, this is one of those. You can pick up Genesis and read that, you can pick up Exodus and read that. It may change your understanding of scripture, but you know, and you 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 will be following the commandments, you'll be following the covenant, but you know, it's not going to have such a huge effect on, you know, who you are mm -hmm. to your core mm -hmm. as Hermes. Hermes is going to talk to things like anger mm -hmm. and selfishness mm -hmm. and patience. Mm -hmm. you know. Gossiping and talking too much. Is, you know, oh, yeah, you anything. don't learn that from any other book. Yeah. No other book goes into, you know, such detail as the Shepherd of Hermes. But anyway. Yeah, and it actually tells you what to do to stop it. You know? Yeah, it tells so, you. Yeah, mm -hmm. it actually tell, gives you... Um, action that you can actually do right. you don't just say you know don't be mean it actually goes into detail to tell you what meanness is why it affects you how to stop it how to recognize it you know it what's what the you gonna do if you don't stop yeah it goes into great detail yeah okay 13 13 then shall their sins be forgiven which they have heretofore committed and the sins of all the saints who have sinned even unto this day if they shall repent with all their hearts and remove all doubts out of their hearts. So it's talking about the forgiveness of sins. This is is one of the main parts of this book is repentance. Understanding, you know, what repentance does for us as far as removing our sins and giving us the opportunity to, to, to go forward with a clean slate. Yeah, and I just think it's amazing how, once again, how the book of Hermes is telling you how... You can have your sins that you've committed in the past be forgiven. Yeah. You know, it says from here to four. So it's saying your previous sins, how they can be forgiven if, you know, if if these things happen. Yeah. And that's, that's necessary, getting our sins forgiven because we have to pay for everything that we have done. But, you know, if we can pay through repentance, that's fine. You know, good. We don't have to do it. If we can pay through charitable deeds, we don't have to. But if we don't, if we don't somehow cleanse away the, the blemishes and the sins and the things that we've done wrong in our past lives, we got this tribulation that's promising to take care of that. Because pain is the other way. Yeah. You know, pain to take care of it. You know, if, if we're not going to do it by way of repentance or good deeds, then the last result is pain. Yeah, and that's covered over in the Third Testament where it talks about there's, you know, two ways. There's merits and then there's pain. So. And so we have pain coming. It's, co it's, it's covered in the Shepherd of Hermes, too. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. we got a class called Purified by Pain where pain is, a, is an important part of our purification only because we have to be purified. We're talking about people who are going into the kingdom of heaven and there's no, there's going to be no sinful people in the kingdom of heaven. There will be people who have committed sins heretofore, but they would have gotten repentance, forgiveness, atonement. Something's going to happen to where when they step over into the kingdom of heaven, it's going to be a clean slate. 14. 
For the Lord has sworn by his glory concerning his elect, having determined this very time, that if anyone shall even now sin, he shall not be saved. Okay, so we are entering a time where we no longer have the option to make errors. It's like at first we started off full errors. All we was was errors, blemishes, mistakes, sins, transgressions. Then we're given a period where we're given the opportunity to learn the covenant, learn the laws, learn the rules. But there's coming a day, and of course during that time, we are still making mistakes. You know, as part of the learning process is, is we do something and then we realize that was wrong and we make a you know commitment to do better going forward. Well, there's coming a time when those days are over when you're not going to be able to sin anymore. You can always, you know, tell people who really don't know what they're talking about when they say stuff like nobody can obey all of the rules of the Bible. Yes, you can. Yeah. You absolutely can. You know, all you got to do is know what they are. Sure, you can't obey them if you're ignorant to them and you don't know what they are or if somebody making them up for you and they change it every day. But if you go in and read the book of the covenant, Exodus chapter 20 through 24, verse 7, you can't find any rule in there that shouldn't or can't be obeyed every day for the rest of your life. There's nothing in there that's, that, that you can't do. Well, I think that we say that because, for one, we don't want to do them. And then, you know, people always resort back to... Um, well, how can you sacrifice all those animals and all that kind of stuff? So that's one of the ways that people um, want to um, say you can't do it. Say you can't do it. But the yeah. thing about it, sacrificing animals is not part of the covenant. Like yeah. I said, it's mm -hmm. Exodus chapter 20 through 24, verse 7. And, you know, you don't find anything about killing people, sacrificing animals, circumcision. You don't even find anything about dietary laws in there. But that is the book of the covenant. And there's right. nothing in it that, you know, you would read it and say, oh, we shouldn't be doing that anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, people are going to find a way to. They, get out because they don't want to. Like I said, they, they don't they don't they don't want to be obedient. And they're taking advantage of the fact that, you know, we are ignorant. To what the covenant is and how it's supposed to be obeyed, and we're just using that, saying, you know, it's, it's like it's like driving a car down the road. You're running stop lights. You're not using your turn signal. You're doing everything wrong, and instead of you going back and reading the driver's ed manual, you just say nobody can obey all of the traffic rules. Nobody obeys all every traffic rule. Right. Yeah. yeah actually, somebody does. Yeah, actually, there's a lot of people who do, <laughs> or who obey every single traffic rule there is. You I'm know. Sure there is. You know, but those are usually people who have actually studied those rules and know what they are, know the importance of the rules, and you know they're not questioning the rules. They they make it a yeah, decision. Yeah, they want and they want to. They want to. They want to obey it. You know, they have a reason why they want to obey it, and that's the same thing. The same approach we need to take with the covenant. You know, people follow the tax rules. They people follow rules. Yeah, they follow the rules that they want to follow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I bet if it was a rule down at your job, I bet you follow that. You know, what I mean? <laughs> if you don't obey this, you're gonna get fired. Well, the thing about it, the same way with the with the with the covenant. If you don't obey the covenant, you're gonna get kicked out of the kingdom of heaven. You're gonna find yourself, you know, in a bad position. And what you're saying, well, what Hermes is saying is that one day you're going to have to follow the the same way you follow those rules in your job manual. You're going to have to follow these rules with scripture or else you're going to get fired. Yeah, you know, you're going to get fired. You're going to yeah. get fired. And, so. and fired in this case will be dying, yeah. going into the spirit world, mm -hmm. spending some time in there with your conscience or whatever yeah. until, you know, you get to come back down to earth and try it all again. Yeah, and you know, a lot of times we're, we're made, when you become, when you're made aware of the spiritual valley, you know, that's not going to be a place where you just go back and sit and relax. No, it ain't heaven like they told us it was. You know, they, 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 they... No, it's not the place where you're going to walk the streets of gold and... No, not, not this... I mean, you, you, you... We got a long way to go before we, before get, we to, get there. Get, yeah. get to that point. It ain't the next stage. You ain't going to yeah, die and yeah, wake up, yeah. you know, looking down at your feet talking about what's all that gold down there for. And all that. <laughs> a few more steps to go before that day. So we, we want to get it right. We want to be. We want to be people who keep the rules instead of rule breakers. 
Yeah, uh, with the motive, like that said, that drivers, that driver who wants to follow the rules, maybe they want their insurance low, maybe mm-hmm. they want to be safe, maybe they want to be known as a person who follows all of the traffic laws, whatever it is that's making them do it. We got to take the same approach towards the scriptures. Something's going to have to make us want to do it right. And, you know, that very well could be knowledge that you have the opportunity to inherit the earth. If you get it right, you will get to inherit the earth. Even if you're an old man, I would still like to be a 70 year old man. I'd still like to be the granddaddy on the planet. Even if I, you know, if I ain't making no uh, family of my own, you know, just walking around being the authority figure. No, that's, or, or the one who has the wisdom. That's what I mean. Somebody who has the wisdom opposed to being in the spirit world, waiting to come back down here somebody's chap, having to go through purity all over again. Yeah. 15. For the repentance of the righteous has its end. The days of repentance are fulfilled to all the saints, but to the heathen. There is repentance even until the last day. Okay, now what does that mean? It's saying that the righteous, there's going to be an end for your being able to repent. Yeah. But for the heathen, um, they have this opportunity to repent even up until the last day. Yeah, because you, 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 you're in a different place than the heathen are. Once, once you get in this tower that we're talking about, once you have gotten to this place of your spiritual maturity to where you are, have a, um, an ex- a, I don't know what the word to use, but the, you have an acceptable um, expectation that you're going to make it into the kingdom of heaven. Mm-hmm. Well, you don't have the opportunity to sin anymore. You, you can't break, you can't. Go against the rules that you've learned so far and expect to go on because, okay, let's take, for instance, anger. You, you, you've you done everything right. You've got all of these 1,000 rules just for a, a number. We've got all of these 1,000 rules down pat. But then one day I'm going to decide, you know, that I'm going to be angry. Am I really still an angry person or am I over that? If I'm over that, why am I getting angry at all? Yeah, once you've conquered anger, why are you going back to it? So you haven't conquered it. I haven't conquered it. If I'm getting angry again, I haven't conquered it. So that's what it means by this one repentance. Because once you repent, there is no more going back. If you call yourself repentant and you still go back, that repentance wasn't real. That repentance wasn't good. That repentance was ill-effective. It wasn't a true repentance. Yeah, um, think about the definition of repentance. It's, It's... means to not go back and do that same action over again. So if you ever go back and do the same action over again, you really didn't repent. You thought you did. We all thought you did. We all thought we heard you repenting. But now that we see you doing that thing over again, no, it wasn't. You, your repentance is still yet to come. Mm, okay. And then you think about it like that, but you also think that when it when it comes to these sins that we have overcome, like anger... And I, I use that one a lot because it's, it's one that's clearly written and it's, you know, probably one that I struggle still with maybe. But once once you've put that anger away, it has to stay gone. It don't come back ever again. Right. And, you know, the thing about if you allow anger to come in, being one of those 12 um um, powers, one of those 12 powers that, you know, principalities and powers that affect man, she mm-hmm. will bring in other ones too. Mm-hmm. And she can cause you to die. So you, if you don't put anger away, if anger is not far away and it creeps back into your life, it's going to keep you in a position where you're subject to death. Okay. You, you, you're not really, but now, so that's one position. You're in a, you're in a, you're higher up on the mountain as you know the person in this position but now the heathen they're still at the bottom of the mountain so they have space to repent they have space to repent because when they repent they're going to come up there where you at and that's why it says at until the last until the very last day Mm -hmm. because you know when that day comes here if you know they somehow decide to make the right decisions they're still going to you know go up to where you're at um but if you ever come back down there where they're at, you, you can get stuck. You're going to get stuck down there. Yeah, because like you said, you're going to take on those other ones. Yeah, they're going to, yeah. 
Exactly. And, mm -hmm. you know, they're going to try to destroy you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 16. Thou shalt therefore say to those who are over the church that they order their ways in righteousness so that they may fully receive the promise with much glory. So this is telling the reader of the Shepherd of Hermes telling Hermes to go down to the authority figures at the church and tell them what's up. Yeah. Good tell luck. them. Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, you're right. I, mean, I tried this for years and it don't it don't really work like as easily as it did. Yeah, but, it's not as easy as just say go down, go over to the church and or tell them to order their ways in righteousness. They might have Mm -hmm. well, somebody stand up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Somebody gonna escort you out. But now, maybe it could have read better. It, it might not be what it meant. But if there was a capital C church, if it was talking about the elect over the real church, mm -hmm. because you have to remember that the, the the lower C church, you know, them buildings down there with the Reverend Pastor Deacon Doctor Doug in them, their their uh esch the eschatology for them is that they go into the sea of apostasy right. and they never do make it into the kingdom of heaven. There's no organized church is gonna be in the kingdom of heaven whatsoever. Seven day of Venice, uh um what are Jehovah Witnesses, uh Episcopalians, uh uh Baptists, ain't none of them gonna be, be able to say he go our Baptist congregation. Oh, our holiness congregation over here in, in the kingdom of heaven, they're all going to be dissolved. Only a few members of those groups will have a chance to go over. But it's still saying to go down and talk to them and tell them to order their ways in righteousness. Yeah. Now, you know, this is where you're going to get your pushback down there at the Little C Church because, you know, he doesn't really believe in righteousness. Like the book of Romans chapter 10 and verse... One, I believe, says he's going on to create his own righteousness. Yeah, I was going to say that he believes in righteousness, but righteousness according to his meaning. Yeah, yeah he's created his own definition. And like uh, Second Thessalonians, um, I think it's chapter 5, is that he's fell in a strong delusion by doing that. He didn't want the righteousness of the Bible. And now he is highly deceived um, because he's under this strong delusion. 17. Stand fast, therefore, ye that work righteousness and continue to do it, that your departure may be with the holy angels. So he's talking about your departure. So he's talking about the day you die. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Being with the holy angels. See, and this is kind of a conversation we was having the other day when we were talking about the spiritual valley opposed to the spiritual world. For most of us who die, we are expecting to go into the spiritual valley, which is a place that's not pleasant. It's full of darkness, confusion, you know, it's nothing really described there to be good at all. But what the way he's describing here, go off with the holy angels, that would mean you're going straight into the whole the spiritual world. You're skipping over the valley part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Most of us are, you know, and this is from our um, teaching from the church. I would say 90% or maybe 95% of all um, churchgoers are expecting to go straight to the spiritual world yeah, or yeah. what we, we would call heaven to be yeah. with Jesus and things of that nature. But, you know, we got a rude awakening coming for us. Um, because, because we're told in the scripture now in the third testament of the bible right. that you know they they are missing some parts to that scenario we don't go straight there mm -hmm. you know there 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 is a place that's similar to what they describe as purgatory yeah where, you, you know, know you think about it <clears throat> how can we expect to be simple down here just say you take somebody who is uh Righteous in our own ways, we're going to call ourselves a Christian. And we're sinful, we're lustful, we're angry, and all this stuff because, you know, 95% of the Christians ain't, you know, we ain't got this right. So we die, and then we expect to go and live with Christ perfect. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Everything per perfect, no sin. Yeah. And, how, you know, how do, you, how do we expect? How do we expect that to happen? No, you got to, there's a, there's something they left out. And I probably, I believe this probably was left out purposely. So well, we, the, the thing is, we make our pastors lie to us. 
if we come into that church and he starts telling us the truth, you know, and, you know, many of us are going to go find somewhere else to worship. He knows that. He knows we're going to get up and we're going to leave. This, If he come in there and start banging on the desk talking about some fire and brimstone and, you know, chances are, you know, he ain't going to see us next Sunday. Mm -mm. We're going somewhere else where they're going to tell us that we're fine and we don't have nothing to worry about. Everything yeah. is good. You know, we can continue living our life. We don't have to make any changes whatsoever. We're going to, you know, everything's going to be fine like it's going now for us. And then the day we die, you know, it, things is going to get better. It's going to yeah. be, you know, the best time of our life. Not telling us, you know, that you need to go in and you need to make up for your past sins. And do, See, we won't listen to that. We make him lie to us. Yeah. Any pastor now that comes in and tells us we have to make up for our sins is we're going to ostracize him. We're going to kick him out of the church. He's going to be sitting somewhere looking real stupid with his Bible by himself. And, and we ain't going to have nothing to do to him. We ain't even going to talk to him. Because we don't want to be held accountable for it. We don't want to know it. Or anything. Yeah, we we want, know. We'd rather have the lie. We'd yeah. rather have the lie that says... Delusion. We'd rather have that strong delusion that says, I don't have to worry about righteousness because, you know, I'm, I'm above righteousness. I got the belief of, you know, Jesus that, you know, when I die, I'm going to be sitting in heaven beside him. I'm going to be on his right hand side. Mm -hmm. The same way he on the right hand side of God, I'm going to be on his right hand side looking down at the rest of you people who, you know, I don't know. Sinful. They're sinful, but you know, we, we, I don't get that. That's the part I don't get. We sin in here. Who are we going to be judging? If, we're, if we are the sinner. And we're going to heaven to judge somebody. Who 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 is more sinful than we are? I don't get that part. They're gonna leave as soon as he says they can't eat pork. Yeah, they. I don't gonna quit. I don't gonna gonna put down their faith because you've seen it firsthand. You know, some somebody says you 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 can't do this. Whatever it is, you can't take pictures. You can't, you know, work on the Sabbath day. You can't, you know, have extra marriage. Whatever it is that we don't like, as mm -hmm. soon as the, as soon as that congregation hear it, right. the individual like, you know what, I'm going to find me somewhere else to go to church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. 18. Happy are ye, as many as shall endure the great trial that is at hand, and whosoever shall not deny his life. All right, so now this is talking about the tribulation here, right. the great trial that's at hand. Mm -hmm. Like we said, everybody has to make up for their sins. This is the part. That's the main part that they're leaving out. That's the main thing that they're lying to us about down there at the church mm -hmm. is they're not telling us that we have to make up for all of the bad stuff that we've done in this lifetime and in previous lifetimes. I think it will make a difference. You know, once you start knowing that you're going to be accountable for the things that you don't, you're you doing, the things that you've done, changes will start being made. Yeah, especially if they know how. Mm -hmm. You say, well, you know, you got to make up for the wrong that you've done. Maybe they will be, you know, a little bit hesitant if they don't know how it is they're supposed to do it. What am I supposed to go find all of those people that I lied to and tell them the truth? Am I supposed to go back to, you know, that store from back in 1985 that I stole that candy bar from and, you know, take a new candy bar in there? How am I supposed to make up for these sins? Mm -hmm. You know, we if we go in and educate the common man, not only do you have to make up for these sins, but you can make them up by way of repentance. Right. By sitting there. Huh? I was going to say merits. By gaining merits, by doing... Um, because there's two ways to gain merits. You can gain merits by doing charitable deeds and doing good stuff for people, doing the good stuff in general. That's a way to make up for the sin. That's a good way to, I mean, you could actually take a plate of food to somebody and make up for some sin that you've done, you know, even, you know, that you don't don't even remember. Right. You know, you can pray for people. Mm -hmm. That help, that, that would go a long way as to clean your own sins away is when you're praying for other people, mm -hmm. you know. Or... Just wait for the pain to come. Oh, like that's the other way of gaining merits. It's through you know, pain. That toothache that just won't go away, and no matter what you do, it it just throbs and throbs and throbs. And Days you're like, where did this come from? You know, or that headache just all of a sudden appears and and it won't go away. Or even you know, hurt yourself. Hurt yourself. You know, stomp your toe for. You're like, what? 
how did I, you know, anything, any it? any kind of pain is going to, you know, and some people need more pain than others, you know. Some of us, you know, stomping our toe and getting a splinter in our hand may be all we need, while others, you know, they, they, people will get burned up in fire, mm. drowned in water, you know, mm -hmm. drowned in a bed of burning gasoline, ain't you know what I mean? <laughs> Nineteen. For the Lord hath sworn by his son, that whoso denieth his son and him, being afraid of his life, he will also deny him in the world that is to come. So now this part is, is important here. Up in 18, it was talking about the trials that we have to go through. But then notice that part says, whosoever um, shall not deny his life. And that's what 19 is talking about, too, the not, not denying his life. And we hear this all throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament, especially in the New Testament, that if, he den if we deny him, he will deny us. Sometime during this tribulation, this is going to become a very important part, is when, you know, we are given the opportunity to deny the Christ. This is why a lot of people are, you know, wanting to get out of here, so to speak. They're wanting to die and go off into the spirit world so they don't have to face the Antichrist because they're afraid that, you know, they're going to be standing there with the choice of denying the Father or being killed, being beheaded, being shot, being whatever, you know. And the thing about it, we're, we're told that this day is coming, but what the scripture tells us is no matter what, we don't deny it actually goes further and tells us that the people who actually deny the Christ are actually going to be the ones who die, the ones who try. And that's what it's talking about here. The ones who try to save their life we'll by saying, it. I don't, huh? Like we'll lose it. Well, they will be the ones who will lose it when they try to say, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, Y'all talking about all this spiritual stuff and, you know, people hearing voices in their head. You know, I don't I don't I don't know if I'm hearing these voices of the father talking to me by way of my conscience, I don't know what you're talking about, that's going to be a form of denial. And then they're going to find themselves outside of the protections they need to survive the tribulation going forward. Mm -hmm. yeah. I believe it's definitely going to be um, a spiritual thing. Um, because in this new era, there's so much dealing with things of the spirit that I don't know if it's going to be so much as as fleshly, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Denying that that voice, you know, people. Oh man, you ain't hearing nothing. That's just you, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Twenty. But those who shall never deny him, he will love his exceeding great mercy be favorable unto them. Now see, the Father knows who's going to deny him already. He, he it, 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 because it even talks about that in the Shepherd of Hermes, whether it's on your heart to deny him or not. That's mm -hmm. that's what he recognizes. If it's in your heart that you will that you will deny him or not. Mm -hmm. And you know that's part of the things that we have to accomplish if we want to um, live on this planet going forward, live through the tribulation. Is we have to be prepared to stand up and confess. You know, even even when we're you know, looking down the barrel of a gun, right. you know, got our neck in a guillotine or whatever, and we're still willing to confess. Well, what we learn in the scripture is even though your neck may be in that guillotine, if you confess the Lord, if you confess the Christ in that moment, somehow that guillotine is not going to work. But those guys who deny him and say, you know, they're the ones who the bad stuff is actually going to happen to but it says those who never deny his will of his exceeding great mercy be favorable unto them. So they're the ones who are going to get the, the favor. And see, this is this is why a lot of, you know, I don't want to pick on anybody, but this is a lot of why the people in churchianity have to be worried about it. Because they're not really told about spirituality in the first place. They're not really told you know what's about to happen to them as far as the great awakening and all of a sudden they're going to start hearing these voices coming from within and those voices that they're hearing from within is our father speaking through their conscience now this is actually going to happen whether they know it or not but then you know what are they going to do when this day happens and somebody comes and say you know do you hear these voices right. well if they don't know what the voices are they've never been taught 
their chances of denying the father in that moment are very high. Yeah. They, I would think, you know, you actually start thinking you're crazy or something. Now there's like going to be those, and, then, and that's why, you know, we're doing this class. That's why this book called Shepherd of Hermes is written. That's why we've done so many classes on the Great Awakening is because that's the last thing we want to do yeah. is think that we're crazy mm -hmm. or that this is aliens or this is 5G technology or something to do with this vaccine and all of this stuff that, you know, man is going to try to say is going mm -hmm. on. You know, we need to recognize that this day has always been prophesied that there's coming a great awakening and we're going to start hearing the Father's voice from inside of our head. Mm. You know, it, it doesn't go on now. Except people, you know, we think need medication or whatever, but this is going to be a global day. Everybody on the planet is going to hear these voices. Right. At least until they deny them. 21. But thou, O Hermes, Remember not the evils which thy sons have done, neither neglect thy sister, but take care that they amend of their former sins. So this is coming back to uh, talking about Hermes and his family. Yeah. It, it, and it's, I don't know um, how much detail is going to go into in this part, but it's, it, it, the message here is you don't remember the bad things that the that the families done, like we said, the kids are going to be the number one uh, people who try to uh, persecute Hermes. You got Hermes here. Hermes is already a pious dude. Hermes is already a good dude, but he's kind of keeping it to himself. He's not really chastising his kids or teaching his kids or teaching his wife. He's kind of just doing. Now, when he comes in and tries to introduce these this covenant and these rules to his family, they're going to go at war. Yeah. You know, that's what the scripture says is you have enemies in your own household. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing is, Hermes can't remember those injuries that they caused him during that transition period. And even before that transition period, he has to forget them. Is it hard? Yeah, it's, it's hard at first until you realize, un until it dawns on you one day and you actually see it firsthand. When you start to see them get chastised, like Journey, for instance, here. When I see her get chastised for something she's done in the past, you, right? Oh, you're talking about the father chastising her. Yeah, the father, huh? Are you talking about the father chastising her for, say, uh, she's done something in the past and you don't have to say nothing. You no. just see it plays out. You see it play out, yeah. And once you see it play out, that's when it, it gets easy. Before then, you're like, you're like I, I don't know, you know, all of this bad stuff, you know, they, they could do it again any day or whatever. It's keeping you re remembering the bad things that anybody has done, not just your family, everybody, anybody has done. You're remembering that stuff. And at first, it's, it's, it, it is a little bit tough, especially when people are still doing stuff to you. You know, it's, it's, it's a little bit tough. But once you start to see it play out, once you gain your maturity, you start to see it play out. It's not so tough anymore because, you know, you see it working the way it's supposed to be working. Yeah, I remember a lot of times when I was doing something, I was like, well, I'm sorry. And you're like, but you're still doing the same thing, yeah. you know. So once you start, it's like you release it. And allow the father to do it. And it's you know absolutely necessary, yeah. yeah. For for each of the things, he, 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 everything that they've ever done or said or didn't do or didn't say, you you have to become oblivious to it. You can't think about it at all. Anytime you have a thought such and such, you have to put it away. And only by doing that do you allow the father to come in and correct it the way it's supposed to be. If you are trying to correct it, it's not going to work. You, you, the person ain't going to get double punishment. Either they're going to get punishment from you, which is going to be ill effective, right. or they can get what they supposed to get from you know the spirit world. Yeah, that reminds me of the scripture that says, "Vengeance is mine," says the Lord. Yeah. I will repay. And then think about how when somebody, you know. And I don't, it might be in the book of Hermes, or it might be in um, the kind of scriptures where it says how somebody gives you praise and you can't really go back and ask for no more because you've gotten that praise already. So that's the same thing. You can't really get mad at that person and seek vengeance on them and then expect the Father to do it also. You've gotten They've gotten it already. Yeah. So, yeah. And it's going to be ill effective too. It ain't going to be worth nothing. Mm -hmm. So, you know. 
let let him ha- let him handle it. Because he 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 works it. He knows what they need. Yeah, he knows, he how, knows how to convince exactly them. Exactly how to give it to them and what they need to convince them. Yeah. And so you see people now that are struggling in their relationships. You know, one of the main things we have to bring into our relationships is humility. That's probably the main reason why we're having so much trouble is because the leader of the house is not humble. And, you know, that's that's my number one message to anybody who's going through, you know, family problems is the leader of the house needs to get humble, period. Mm -hmm. And then after he does, you know, he needs to learn to not remember the injuries that that's occurring to him, even if they're ongoing, even if they still happen in today, he's got to uh, put that out of his mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let the Father handle it. 22. For they will be instructed by this doctrine, if thou shalt not be mindful of what they have done wickedly. No, that's just what you said. Yeah, mm-hmm. but notice there's an if statement there. If thou shalt not be mindful of what they have done, and I believe the opposite is true. If you are mindful of what they have done, they will not be instructed by this doctrine. Right. You know, so that's important. You know, um, you can't remember, you have to forget it. Yeah. Walk away from it. Yeah. 23. For the remembrance of evils work is death, but the forgetting of them eternal life. Yeah. And any any time any time you witness a person that's remembering e- injuries, they are in trouble. Mm-hmm. They are in big trouble. Mm-hmm. No matter what the injury, no matter what they think somebody did to them, there ain't nothing somebody could have done to you that you can't get over. Mm-hmm. Even if they killed you, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. You can, you can get over, it. and you really need to be trying to get over everything that they've done, so that the Father can move. Even even in the Lord's prayer, it says, "Forgive us our injuries, as we forgive those that you know." Uh, yeah, and so we have to we, we 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 have to be willing to look past what they've done to us. Then you know they can grow and we can grow too, because like it says there, remembrance of evils work of death. That's actually will kill you. Mm-hmm. And you know this. This society is so wicked that we just changed it to a way, you know, we always want to keep saying, brother, I forgive you, but I won't forget. Well, you know, that's that's yeah. not what Hermes is saying. He's telling us to forgive and to forget. And to, and to forget. Walk yeah, that's the, that's the blessing when you, when you can actually forget and you only remember what happened. That's, that's when you reach a blessed state. Mm-hmm. 24. But thou, O Hermes has undergone a great many worldly troubles for the offenses of thy house, because thou hast neglected them as things that did not belong unto thee, and thou art wholly taken up with thy great business. Yeah, so, like we said, Hermes, was, he was a good guy, and this is a lot of people in these situations, right. you know, they, they may be studying the word like they're supposed to, but they're not sharing, and I... Sharing with the rest of the family. Yeah, you um, you're you're doing good things, but you're not taking the time out to to uh, help your children, help your wife, and things like that. You yeah. Know? yeah. And remember, Hermes's problem was they said that he loved them so much, so that when he saw them doing mm-hmm. things that was wrong, he just let them do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I get accused of doing that a lot, especially with the. The last two, when I see them doing doing things that they shouldn't do, you know, I let them get by with it. But that's not good. No, it's not because it's not when they when they grow up, they're gonna be doing the same thing. Right. They they need they need for that leadership to to steer them in the right direction. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's even you know chastisement. You know, chast all chastisement is not bad. Mm-hmm. All discipline. Just think if the father didn't discipline us, mm-hmm. you know, we would be rebellious and just doing whatever so all discipline is not bad okay 25 nevertheless for this cause shalt thou be saved that thou hast not departed from the living God and thy simplicity and singular continency shall preserve thee if thou shalt continue in them so 
now you have, like we said, keep saying this, um, Hermes is a good guy, but now it's only when he bring his family up to be as good as he is that they are going to have a chance to survive the tribulation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, they, especially people who don't care about the promises of the Bible as far as inheriting the earth and surviving the tribulation, they don't care nothing about this kind of stuff either. Right. They don't really, you know, I remember talking to a pastor one time and, you know, I was telling talking to him about the tribulation and their whole plan for the tribulation was to be dead before right. it ever happened. Right. You know, I, I'm old now and I'll be dead before that ever happens. Right. Okay, well, what about your children? Well, they're on their own is mm -hmm. what they were told, you know, so, and that's a lot of what people, you know, think, you know, they ain't really worried about their wife and their kids. We only worried about our own salvation. Right. You know, when I'm gone, they'll figure it out for themselves or whatever. Yeah. 26. Yes. They shall save all such as do such things and walk in innocence and simplicity. So this is saying that once he does all these things, they'll get it. Yeah, they'll, they'll get it. They'll start acting right. Yeah, yeah well, they, well, they will. They, yeah, because, you know, especially our kids, they act just like us. You know, if we're angry, they're going to be angry. Mm -hmm. If we're selfish, they're going to be selfish. And there is a lag so that when I stop being angry it may be you know a little time passes but eventually the kids will catch on and they'll see and they'll start to emulate it too and they, they won't be so angry going forward mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. 27 they who are of this kind shall prevail against impiety and continue until life eternal so Talking about this, this, this simple kind here, this like, and and if it's talking about like it, how the Messiah told us we have to be like little children. Little children are extremely simple mm -hmm. when it comes to ideas and stuff like that. You know, you you tell them you know some scriptural truth, they ain't got to go do hours of research on Wikipedia and Google to see what you know the theologians have to say about it. You know, mm -hmm. they. They have this simplicity and the ones who, you know, have this simplicity towards the word of God, you know, these are the ones who will continue to yeah. eternal life. Yeah. And, you know, this eternal life part is still up for debate on what he's actually talking about there, you know, because there's some scripture that implies that, you know, after the tribulation, human beings will live for a long time like they did before the flood of Noah, We're talking about thousands of years, mm -hmm. you know. And, you know, could this very well be what he's talking about is that there will be people born during the tribulation that will not have the opportunity to die. I mean, and the planet will be gone up in be burn up, and they will still be alive because they've been alive for hundreds of years. Or that's one camp, but he also could be talking about how we will learn to recognize our spirit man, too, and come into contact with our spirit man and knowing who he is, you know, we realize that we have eternal life and we'll live forever. So, yeah. mm -hmm. 28. Happy are all they that do righteousness. They shall not be consumed forever. Again, this is speaking to the everlasting life part. Um, those that do righteousness will live forever. It, it, that verse, oh, death, where is your sting, comes to mind. Mm -hmm. No. That's one of the promises of obeying the scripture is eternal life. Right. And, you know, I guess that makes sense. Those that, you know, are so looking forward to the great escape being thrust into the spirit world are the same people that don't want anything to do with righteousness, the covenant, the commandments, the judgments or the statutes. They, they want that not in their life at all. And yet they're talking about leaving here. They, yeah. they want to be gone. 29. But thou wilt say, Behold, there is a great trial coming. If it seem good to thee, deny him again. It's, it's a confusing verse. It's even confusing over there in that other translation. Uh, where it says Maximus, called the guy Maximus or whatever. Under torture, if they think that 
things we can do during this time is to deny the father even greater than taking the mark of the beast if you deny him you're definitely gonna get the mark of the beast and you're gonna get some other stuff too 30 the Lord is nigh to them that turn to him as it is written in the book of Heldem and Maldel who prophesied to the people of Israel in the wilderness Okay, now who is this Hildam and Moldah? Well, you remember in the book of Exodus, um, I don't have it in front of me, oh. but there was um, these guys that was prophesying, mm -hmm. and they came to Moses, and they said, Moses, you got these two guys over there prophesying, make them stop. Yeah, and they said, I wish that all were prophets, yeah. Yeah, those were the two. Okay. Yeah, they were, and their, their writings are somewhere, they're probably stuck off in the, the uh, uh, Vatican of the <laughs> basement of the Vatican or the Library of Congress somewhere. Mm -hmm. But these books do exist somewhere. Um, at least they did at one point, but you have a hard time finding them now. I think it's in Numbers in 26 and 27, or Numbers chapter 6 and verse 26 is when you read about the hell, hell down and mortal. 31. Moreover, brethren. It was revealed to me as I was sleeping by a very godly young man, saying unto me, What thinkest thou of that old woman from who thou received that book? Who is she? I answered, A Sibyl. So, we have to remember that throughout all this here, Hermes is in a vision. Yeah. It seems like he's walking around and talking and seeing things and and somebody's talking to him, but we have to remember that he's in a vision, and he's saying that um, somebody else appeared to him, and there was a fair young guy, young man, who appeared to him and asked him, do you know who that old woman was? And Hermes is saying, I think she's a sibyl, and a sibyl, from my understanding, is sort of like a ghost or something like that? Um, yeah, something like that. You know what I think of? You know that lady in the, um, the Matrix black lady who they call the oracle. Yeah, she was a civil. She yeah. would have been something like what we would think of as a civil. Yeah. But now, this other, this goodly young man, now this is the first time we hear of this guy. Yeah. But he's actually going to be the star of the show going forward. Mm -hmm. This is actually the angel of repentance. Yeah, but he's making an appearance on the scene. Making an appearance on the scene. He's going to uh, do all of the talking in the second book called Commands and all of it in the third book called Similitudes, right? Yes. But like you said, Hermes is in a vision state. He's still dreaming right now. In those other parts of the book later on, he's actually going to be hearing from this angel directly. Yes. And he's not going to be in a vision state anymore. Right. But, but this is the first time that we hear from him. And he's saying, what about this old lady? Who do you think she is? 32. Thou art mistaken, said he. She is not. I replied, who is she then, sir? He answered me. It is the church of God. Okay, so this is an important verse because we're finding out who this lady is. Mm -hmm. This story has been seeming kind of strange until we get to this point when we realize, okay, that Hermes has been in a dream yeah. and he has been having a face-to-face -face congregation with this woman mm -hmm. who is the church of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Big C Church. Yeah. 33. And I said unto him, why then does she appear old? She is, therefore, said he, an old woman, because she was the first of all creation, and the world was made for her. Okay. She was the first of all creation, even even before Satan, even before Michael, even before Gabriel, mm -hmm. even before the earth, because it says the earth was created for her. 34. After this, I saw a vision at home in my own house, and the old woman, whom I had seen before, 
came to me and asked me whether I had yet delivered her book to the elders of the church, and I answered that I had not yet. So this makes me believe that is she sort of like asking him, or does she have the book, or or she, because she asked him had he delivered that book to the church yet? Well, remember he wrote down the book, so he has a copy oh, okay. of it. Right, right. Yeah, he has a copy of it, and he was supposed to take it and deliver it to the elders of the church. Right, right. But he That's hasn't right. done. He hasn't done. It. But what about this part right here? It says, and after this, I saw a vision at home in my own house. So I'm thinking that he has w awakened and. Now he's at home. Oh, he's having. Oh, okay. So it's not like the. It's different than the vision that yeah, he had I think before. It's a, I think it's uh, separate. 35. She replied, Thou hast well done, for I have certain words more to tell thee. But when okay. I shall have finished all the words, they shall be clearly understood by the elect. So now she's about to um, tell him some more things to write down? Yeah, or some more parts to the book. Yeah, and is that similar to and things of that? Like I th we hear the we hear the to? entire book in um, the third chapter of Visions in about verse 92, 94, mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. I should read the entire book. Thirty six. And thou mm -hmm. shalt write two books and send one to Clement and one to Grapti. For Clement shall send it to the foreign cities, because it is permitted to him so to do. But Grafty shall admonish the widows and orphans. So this Hermes has actually got there's three parts to this book. One is going to be carried by Hermes, one is going to be carried by Clement, and one is going to be carried by Grafty. Right. And it says Clement um, shall send it to the foreign cities because he's allowed to do so. But Grafty shall admonish the widows and the orphans. Yeah. So you got the widows and the orphans. Um, well, what I think, when I am hearing him say, but Grafty shall admonish the widows and the orphans. This brings me back to the women and the children. So, um, especially when he says to admonish them. So I'm thinking that he's talking about how. Um, he should correct them for widows being talkative and orphans uh, being rebellious and betrayals of their children. Yeah, I believe I believe you're right. But you know, these orphans, you know, when things get really, really bad from a practical standpoint, who's actually going to be looking out for all of these orphans? Yeah. Who's going to be? You know, making sure they got food, making sure they got shelter, making sure, you know, because a lot of these people who's paid to protect them nowadays are going to scramble when the money goes away. 37. But thou shalt read in this city with the elders of the church. So now we're talking about these elders again. Yeah. And these elders, you know, it's not, not really have much to do with age as much as it has to do with spiritual maturity. Right. Mm -hmm. And so these would be the potential 144,000, you know, or that multitude that no man can number. But these are people who are, are expected to survive the tribulation and go on to repopulate the earth. Right. Mm -hmm. And this is, you know, where this, why we've been doing this, why we, you know, why we're even doing this class now is hoping that we meet this requirement where it's saying to read this in, you know, for the church of the elders. Right. You know, because, you know, hopefully there's a few of those guys who are listening to this channel, listening to this video, you know, that we might be able to get some of the credit for doing what we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that takes us to the end of chapter two. And that leads us up to chapter three. Yeah, and that's talking about of the building of the church triumphant in... And of the several sorts of reprobates. Guys, it's going to be a really, really fun class, this Vision 3. It's going to be something else. It's the reason why we went back and done Vision 1, Vision 2 the way we did was to get us prepared for, you know, what's coming in Vision 3. Um, because there's some exciting stuff. Go ahead and read ahead. You can find a link to this book in the description of this video. So you can go ahead and read ahead, both for audio book and 
a PDF that you can download. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would just say that um, with the upcoming of Visions 3, we're probably going to, because it is 133 verses, we'll probably do, what, one, two, or more. Sections. Maybe, maybe yeah. about an hour of time or something like that. Mm. But anyway, yeah. anyway. So any closing thoughts? We'll let Stacy close this up talking about his talkative wife. Wait, we got Chris here. He can talk about the lewd sons. Any <laughs> closing thoughts? Well, I guess my closing thoughts would be to um, um, to go back to what we were saying about how it's really going to take a family to um, to do all this. How you know. The, the husband just can't do it on his own. He has to remember that, you know, that he has a family members and that as far as the wife, to just learn to reframe your tongue. Yeah. Learn, learn to not uh, say everything that pops into your head. And that's one of my big things. I try not to, everything that pops in my head, I'm realizing that it's not of the father that I have evil things that my flesh is 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 accepting and things that my spirit is trying to not accept that just pops in my mind and you have to reframe your tongue it's just something that you have to train yourself to do yeah mm -hmm. yeah but they go a long way to helping your your family structure because like I mentioned in one of the main errors that's going on in our households is uh, humility when yeah. the, yeah, when a man, whoever stops being humble, then he starts to tear up everything that he's created. Well, when it comes to the wife, remember that she's supposed to be subordinate to him. And if she is talkative and running, or, you know, putting him down or doing whatever, it makes it hard for the husband to be humble. Mm -hmm. You know, it's easy to be humble when you're not getting humiliated. I say all the time. <laughs> yeah. So when your wife is humi when that wife is humiliating him. She's actually, you know, making it difficult for him to stay humble mm -hmm. and then, you know, making it difficult for them to, you know, live the way they're supposed to live, for their house to go the way they're supposed to go, for there to flourish. You know, if she can learn to refrain, refrain her tongue, yeah. um, she can give him a chance to become humble, meek. Yeah, give him a chance to become um, the the. the, the person the father created him to be yeah. yeah all right so with that i guess we're in up closing the class and we'll see you in vision three vision three and with that we'll say shalom shalom goodbye shalom.